Elon Musk just released an update on the test campaign schedule of SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster. Booster 7 has indeed come a long way. In the past couple of months, both B7 and SN24 vehicles underwent cryogenic proof tests to assess structural integrity and also had their engines tested during multiple static fire tests. B7 kicked off the most important stage of its flight qualification process on August 9th and the 11th with two back-to-back -back static fires, each igniting just one of 20 installed Raptor engines. Both appeared to be successful, and SpaceX then returned B-7 to its Boca Chica, Texas factory to reinstall a full set of 33 engines to be sent back to the launch pad two weeks later. On August 31st, SpaceX attempted to ignite three of Booster 7's 33 Raptors. One engine failed to ignite, but the others did not fail that is, resulting in a mostly successful two-engine test. Over the next two weeks, SpaceX performed several ignition-free spin-prime tests, two of which appeared to spin up all 33 engines without causing an explosion. SpaceX then telegraphed its next major goal with a seven-engine spin-prime test on September 16th, and another, albeit with a slightly different set of engines, on September 19th. Shortly after the second seven-engine spin prime test, SpaceX refilled Booster 7 with propellant, went back through the same procedures, and ignited the same seven engines for about five seconds. No obvious issues arose, and Musk later implied that the test went well. A single Raptor 2 engine has 230 tons, or around 500,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. So, multiplying it by seven engines firing at once, the thrust equals to that of 1,610 tons, or around 35,000 pounds. Two months later, the company broke new ground by simultaneously igniting 14 of the 33 Raptor engines in B7 at once. Musk afterward confirmed that the test went well. This was the highest number of SpaceX's Raptor engines ever tested simultaneously, which is double the amount from the last test in September, marking another crucial step towards Starship's development. During the static fire that lasted 10 seconds, the booster generated 3,220 tons of thrust, which translates to 7.1 million pounds of propulsion power. And for a moment, the Starship vehicle theoretically became the most powerful operational rocket in the world. But the vehicle has a total of 33 engines, so there's plenty of work ahead and even more potential thrust before liftoff. The chief executive of SpaceX revealed an increasingly rare update, that the company would follow the test with a 20-second engine test, possibly one more static fire, then orbital launch attempt. I wonder if that one more static fire is going to involve all 33 engines. Wouldn't that be something? Static firing a Super Heavy with all 33 Raptor engines installed has a capacity of generating a total of 7,600 metric ton, which equates to around 16,700,000 pound force of thrust. And for a full wet dress rehearsal, which has also never been done with Super Heavy, SpaceX would need to fill the booster with around 3,400 tons of propellant, which is about 7.5 million pounds. But out of an abundance of caution, Super Heavy B-7 will likely have far less propellant aboard during almost all of its static fire tests. But a full static fire with a full load of propellant, simulating most pre-launch conditions, will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign. At full thrust, 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn around 25 tons or around 55,000 pounds of propellant per second so a huge amount of propellant will be needed regardless. Super Heavy B-7 is expected to begin static firing as early as November 17th. Additional closures include the 18th, 21st, and the 22nd of this month. And if all goes well, SpaceX could begin preparing the same rocket for Starship's orbital launch debut. In fact, Musk aims to build the first colony on the Red Planet within the next 20 years, and hopes hundreds of brave astronauts could achieve building a self-sustaining colony by the year 2050. In the meantime, NASA selected SpaceX to build a Starship HLS, or Human Landing System variant, to return astronauts to the moon by 2025. And the company also has multiple customers that booked circumlunar voyages set to happen in a couple of years, which includes Shift4 Payments founder slash 
slash inspiration for Commander Jared Isaacman, Japanese entrepreneur Yusaku Meizawa, and Dennis Tito, who made history as the first civilian space tourist to visit the ISS, or International Space Station, in 2001 aboard Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. The ambitious timeline is what drives SpaceX's engineers towards launching Starship to orbit as soon as possible. At an October 31st meeting of the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee, Mark Kirisic, Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development at NASA, said the first Starship orbital launch attempt could take place as soon as early December. That schedule depends on both testing of the vehicle as well as receipt of a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. However, as tends to happen, these are approved once most of the outstanding pre-launch tests are completed, sometimes issued just a few days before the launch. Meanwhile, billionaire Elon Musk's SpaceX is in talks to raise nearly 1 billion US dollars in a new round that would value the rocket launch and satellite company at about 150 billion dollars. The ongoing talks offer SpaceX's share at about $85 apiece, up from the $125 billion valuation the company fetched earlier this year, sources said, suggesting strong investors' appetite, while many late-stage venture capital-backed startups have to cope with valuation cuts. Bloomberg News first reported the raise on Tuesday. Investors could buy new shares issued by SpaceX or from employees who opt to sell via a private placement or tender offer. The primary raise could fetch nearly 1 billion US, one of the sources added. As one of the most valuable private companies in the world, SpaceX has regularly provided liquidity programs for employees so they can sell their shares in the secondary market without the company going public. Musk has also said that he plans to provide similar shares and liquidity programs for Twitter, the social media company he took private in a $44 billion deal. Investors have shown strong interest in SpaceX as the company has had a series of breakthroughs this year, especially since SpaceX launched the Falcon Heavy, the world's most powerful active rocket for the first time in more than three years. It's also targeting early December to launch its giant Starship rocket system into orbit for the first time. In addition to that, Starlink, SpaceX's growing network of thousands of internet satellites, has also captivated investors as a major revenue generator with commercialized applications, such as the rollout of high-speed internet on commercial airlines last month. Well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.